Imagine it's early December 2024. Overnight, the global tech and energy industries are shaken. China suddenly announces strict export controls on some of the world's most critical materials, gallium, germanium, antimony, and graphite. These aren't just minerals, they're the backbone of high-tech industries, from semiconductors to electric vehicle batteries. The move hits like a lightning bolt. For years, the United States has relied heavily on these materials from China, and suddenly, the supply is under scrutiny. The world asks, is this just a reaction to U.S. sanctions or a calculated move to reshape global supply chains? This is more than a trade dispute. This is a high-stakes confrontation where every shipment, every tariff, and every material could tilt the balance of global technology power. So here's the big question. Why did China act so suddenly, and how will the U.S. respond? Today, we're diving into the full story, from the raw numbers to the strategies behind the headlines, and uncovering what this could mean for industries and consumers around the world. Before we dive into the trade battle, let's understand why China's move matters so much. The materials in question, gallium, germanium, antimony, and graphite, aren't just rare, they're strategic lifelines for modern technology. Gallium and germanium are critical in semiconductors and high-speed electronics. Antimony is used in flame retardants and alloys for defense applications. And graphite? That's a key ingredient in electric vehicle batteries and many military technologies. Without steady access to these, industries can't function normally. Here's a striking number. China controls over 92% of the global graphite market. That means nearly all graphite used in the U.S. and around the world flows through China's supply chains. Even countries with their own graphite reserves often rely on China for refining and processing because that's where the expertise and capacity exist. In other words, these aren't just commodities on a map. They are the foundation of chips, batteries, defense, and energy technologies. Any disruption can ripple across the global economy. Now that we understand what's at stake, the next question is, how did the U.S. respond to this sudden shock? As soon as China tightened its grip on these critical materials, the United States sprang into action. But not directly through government policy at first. Instead, a powerful industry group called the American Active Anode Material Producers, made up of graphite producers in the U.S. and Canada, stepped forward with a bold plan. They proposed something that immediately grabbed headlines, tariffs of up to 920% on Chinese battery metals. The idea was to hit China where it hurts, making imports prohibitively expensive and giving domestic producers an advantage. On paper, it looked like a dramatic counterpunch, a take-that-move in the trade battle. But here's the tension. While it seems aggressive, the plan wasn't just a simple attack. It raised a key question. Could such extreme tariffs actually work without backfiring? On the global stage, retaliatory trade measures are a bit like a double-edged sword. They can hurt your competitor, but if you miscalculate, they can also slice right back at your own industries and consumers. This move marked the first major escalation in the graphite dispute, signaling that both China and the U.S. were ready to play hardball. At first glance, a 920% tariff on Chinese graphite sounds like a knockout punch. But experts quickly pointed out a critical problem. The U.S. might end up hurting itself more than China. Here's why. Graphite is a core ingredient in electric vehicle batteries, making up about 10% of the total manufacturing cost. American automakers like Tesla rely heavily on this material. If tariffs make Chinese graphite suddenly nine times more expensive, the cost of batteries, and ultimately the price of EVs, could skyrocket. That's not a small inconvenience. It could slow down the U.S. electric vehicle industry at a time when global competition is heating up. It's similar to a baseball player swinging with all his might to hit the ball, but accidentally striking the catcher instead. By trying to punish China, the U.S. risks raising costs for its own manufacturers, stalling innovation, and limiting competitiveness. In other words, this retaliation isn't just a bold trade move. It's a gamble. 
And the bigger question is, does the U.S. really have a backup plan if domestic production can't fill the gap? To understand the bigger picture, we need to look at China's reliance on the United States for high-tech components, especially chips. Over the past three years, China's imports of semiconductors from the U.S. were massive $439.7 billion, $415.6 billion, and $349.4 billion, respectively. In 2024 alone, China is expected to import around $350 billion worth of chips, with roughly half coming from the U.S. That's about $175 billion flowing directly to American chipmakers. This dependence has long been called a stuck-neck problem for China. They need certain U.S. chips to power everything from smartphones to AI systems. But there's a twist. China has been aggressively investing in independent chip research and development. Year by year, the share of Chinese imports from the U.S. is shrinking, showing that China is slowly reducing its reliance on foreign suppliers. If China succeeds in replacing even 50% of U.S. chip imports, that could cut U.S. chip revenues by nearly $90 billion, a huge impact on giants like Intel or AMD. This mirrors the graphite situation, as China strengthens its tech independence, it's gaining leverage not just in one industry, but across multiple strategic sectors. Understanding this parallel helps us see why the U.S. feels pressured to act quickly on graphite. It's part of a larger high-tech power struggle, not just a single trade dispute. China isn't just reacting to U.S. sanctions. It's actively building its dominance in advanced materials that power the modern economy. One clear example is silicon carbide, a critical material for semiconductors, electric vehicles, and renewable energy technologies. Over the past few years, more than 100 Chinese companies have entered the silicon carbide industry, and by 2024, over 50 major projects were making significant progress. On the production side, China already has two 8-inch silicon carbide wafer production lines, with engineering batches completed and mass production expected next year. This isn't just about quantity. China is climbing the ranks of global technology. According to industry surveys, by 2025, China's wafer foundries are projected to increase production capacity by 6% among the world's top 10 mature process foundries. The message is clear. China's export controls are strategic, not reactive. By controlling key materials and ramping up domestic production of advanced tech inputs, China is positioning itself as a global powerhouse. This makes the graphite and chip disputes part of a broader industrial strategy, rather than isolated incidents. China's rapid moves in advanced materials and strategic technologies didn't go unanswered. The United States responded with a series of export controls and sanctions, aiming to slow China's technological progress and maintain its global edge. First, the U.S. added 136 Chinese companies and four overseas subsidiaries to the so-called Entity List, restricting their access to American technology and critical components. This list is essentially a red flag. If you're on it, U.S. companies cannot sell you advanced tech without government approval. It's a way to target Chinese firms involved in semiconductors, defense, and emerging tech. But the U.S. didn't stop there. Washington also pressured allied countries, including the Netherlands, South Korea, Japan, Singapore, and Malaysia, to participate in the restrictions. Using the foreign direct product rule, the U.S. tried to cut off Chinese companies from acquiring U.S.-made technology abroad. In practice, this means that even if a Chinese company buys chips or equipment from a third country, if those products contain U.S. technology, restrictions still apply. These measures are part of a larger strategy to contain China's technological rise. It's like a chess game. The U.S. moves to restrict access to critical pieces, hoping to slow China's advance in semiconductors and high-tech materials. But China's quick countermeasures, particularly on graphite and dual-use materials, show that this battle isn't one-sided. The tension is rising, 
Each side is carefully targeting the other's vulnerabilities, and the stakes include military, industrial, and consumer technology worldwide. China didn't take long to respond. Less than a day after the U.S. announced its export controls, Beijing strengthened its own export restrictions on so-called dual-use items. You know, those materials that can be used for both civilian and military purposes. These restrictions explicitly targeted military users in the United States or American companies producing military-related technologies. This move, honestly, hit a critical vulnerability. Materials like graphite, gallium, and germanium aren't just for batteries or electronics. They're, well, absolutely essential for defense and aerospace industries. By controlling these exports, China effectively put the U.S. in a bind. If American companies wanted to maintain production in high-tech or defense sectors, they would need access to Chinese materials. The speed and precision of this counterpunch sent a clear message. China isn't just reacting. It's playing strategically, targeting the points that matter most in U.S. technological development. In this high-stakes game, every shipment, every restriction, and every regulation can tilt the balance of power. It's like a chessboard where China has already positioned its pieces to defend and counterattack simultaneously, forcing the U.S. to think carefully before making the next move. While governments were making headlines, the push for retaliation actually came from the industry level. A key player in this story is the American Active Anode Material Producers, an organization made up of graphite companies in the United States and Canada. These companies suddenly proposed extreme measures, tariffs of up to 920% on Chinese battery metals. Their motivation is straightforward. By pressuring the U.S. government, they hope to protect domestic graphite producers, limit Chinese competition, and gain political leverage. In other words, this wasn't just about economics. It was about lobbying for market advantage. However, their approach raised eyebrows. Experts pointed out that unilateral extreme tariffs might sound tough, but in practice, they could destabilize the U.S. supply chain increase costs for manufacturers, and even slow innovation in industries like electric vehicles and batteries. This section of the story shows that trade disputes aren't just about governments. Industry groups, lobbyists, and corporate interests can dramatically influence national policy. It's a mix of business strategy and politics, adding another layer of complexity to the graphite conflict. The proposed 920% tariff on Chinese graphite might sound like a bold solution, but in reality, it carries serious risks for the United States. To understand why, let's look at the numbers. In 2023, the U.S. imported over 91,000 tons of graphite, and 77% of that came from China. That's more than three-quarters of domestic demand, a heavy dependence that can't be easily replaced. If tariffs suddenly made Chinese graphite prohibitively expensive, American manufacturers would scramble to find alternatives. Domestic graphite production is limited, and synthetic graphite is costly and insufficient to meet demand. The result? Manufacturing costs for electric vehicles and batteries could skyrocket, pushing prices up for consumers and slowing adoption of green technologies. Experts warn that this is a classic case of misjudging the market. While the tariffs aim to punish Chinese competitors, they could instead fragment the global supply chain and isolate U.S. companies in international markets. The energy, automotive, and tech sectors would feel the brunt of this miscalculation, showing that in trade wars, sometimes the aggressor ends up paying the highest price. To see the potential fallout of a 920% graphite tariff, let's look at electric vehicles an industry that millions of Americans rely on, and that represents the future of transportation. Graphite is a critical component in EV batteries, making up about 10% of battery manufacturing costs. American automakers like Tesla, Ford, and GM import a significant portion of their graphite from China. If tariffs were imposed, the cost of batteries could double almost overnight, making EVs far more expensive for consumers.
Imagine planning to buy a Tesla only to see the price jump tens of thousands of dollars because the raw material suddenly costs nine times more. It's not just about cars. Higher battery costs ripple through renewable energy storage, electric buses, and even portable electronics. Tesla's global production plans, including its mega factories, rely heavily on affordable graphite. If the supply is restricted or costs spike, U.S. companies could lose their competitive edge internationally, slowing down both innovation and market expansion. In short, this isn't just a trade skirmish. It's a real-world economic impact that could affect consumers, manufacturers, and the green energy transition. Even if the U.S. imposes extreme tariffs, China is in a strong position. As of 2023, China holds the largest graphite reserves in the world. 78 million tons, accounting for nearly 28% of global reserves. More importantly, China dominates refining and processing, which means raw graphite from other countries often still has to pass through Chinese facilities before it's usable. The reality is clear. China has buyers waiting. Countries across Europe, Asia, and even the Americas depend on Chinese graphite for batteries, electronics, and defense applications. This gives China a kind of strategic leverage. It can restrict or regulate exports without suffering significant financial loss. Meanwhile, the U.S. faces a difficult dilemma. Even if it tries to produce graphite domestically, the quantity, quality, and cost cannot match China's supply chain in the short term. Attempting to completely replace Chinese graphite could raise production costs dramatically and disrupt entire industries. In essence, China's position is asymmetrically strong. It can weather trade retaliation while continuing to influence global markets, whereas the U.S. would struggle to fill the gap without hurting its own consumers and industries. So, what have we learned from this high-stakes trade confrontation? China's sudden export controls on critical materials like graphite, gallium, and germanium were not just reactive, but part of a strategic plan to strengthen its position in global supply chains. Meanwhile, the U.S. response, including the proposed 920% tariffs pushed by North American graphite producers, may backfire, raising costs for American manufacturers and consumers while doing little to slow China. This isn't just a story about minerals or batteries. It's a window into the future of global trade, technology, and power dynamics. As China continues to advance in semiconductors, silicon carbide, and other strategic materials, the U.S. faces tough choices, retaliate and risk domestic disruption, or adapt and innovate to reduce reliance on foreign sources. Here's the question for you. Will the U.S. government really impose such extreme tariffs, knowing the potential costs? And who will bear the brunt of this trade battle, American consumers, companies, or China itself. If you want to stay ahead of these unfolding global developments, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. We'll continue to break down these complex trade and tech stories, giving you clear insights and real-world examples. Stay informed, because in today's world, every shipment, every material, and every policy move can reshape industries worldwide.